Good morning. Thank you very much for having us here. And uh, it, was a, it is a real pleasure to, to talk to you here today. And mo especially after Douglas and Anastasia's uh, lectures, in which they pinpointed the importance of forests for the hydrological cycle, the, some shortcomings in modeling that are present. And you know, models are the way we have today to uh, foresee what are the consequences of our present actions. How can we predict the future? So what we do, we take equations of motion, conservation of mass, thermodynamics, that is physically based, and try to solve it. But the Earth is a very complex system with several scales of processes that we cannot mathematically, computationally resolve. So then what do we do? We resort to parameters. We parameterize. And parameterization is key on the numbers that we get. However, this is a shortcoming. It is the way we have to do today, and a powerful instrument to test hypotheses and to see what are the relative importance of trees, ocean, winds. And so what I wanted to do today, very humbly, is to sh share with you just a few slides on our experience in Brazil to develop such a model. This is a task for giants huge institutions, hundreds of, of scientists, mathematicians, physicians, engineers, uh, programmers, are involved globally. So I, so I will show you this and the relevance from the point of view of modeling, what forests do to us. And so, and, and this in the context of uh, Mm. Global climate change. Global climate change, you know, it is a big challenge to bring two subjects in one single 15 minutes talk, but forests are completely relevant for cl global climate change and maybe an overlooked problem, an overlooked solution to it. So let us see if we can do this. First, I, I want to conceptualize what is climate and climate change. Climate is this thing that we have summer and winter, uh, a cold front. And if we have a, enough, strong enough forcing, maybe our oscillating climate will get to a, another state. So the curvature of these two things, uh, lines here, give us the stability of our climate. And our climate, and you will see at the end, our climate, as uh, Makarieva showed us now here and Douglas, forests are an important role in stabilizing our climate. They are active in doing this. And the, what models can do, they can help us uh, put numbers to it and conceptualize, is this number of extreme events that are already happening? Why are they happening? What are the forcing that is causing, or is not a forcing, it's an internal variability. It's an eternal de debate among the community. But we have had a hurricane in South Atlantic. And that is unprecedented. And Brazil is warming. So we want to, to understand this. And, and in order to, to have a, a broader concept, I would like to to show this statement from uh, Paul Crutzen, a Nobel Prize in chemistry, that we entered into the Anthropocene. What is the Anthropocene? It's the realization that we collectively can have a direct impact in our era, in our geological era. We can, the, the, what they call Anthropocene, the era of us. And uh, what are one of the consequences of this era of us is something that is maybe not, uh, um, uh, not anticipated, that the Earth is warming. This is last week's IPCC special report, 1.5 degrees warming, and the projections. 
And as you can read, uh, the, the, the report is available, the, the, the projections are really alarming. And I can tell you, they didn't tell the whole story. They just said that, listen, there is a problem ahead. And the problem is big. Because if you say that the problem is too big, you get paralyzed in fear. So we have a problem there. And why is it a problem? Let us discuss it frankly, that the, the Earth gets a little warmer. So you, you are here in the northern la higher latitude. Maybe you think, well, maybe mild winters. That's not quite the case. You can get even stronger winters, it's deeper winters and very uh, hot summers. But there's another point that is sometimes is not perceived. What are the consequences of increasing temperature? Is the photosynthesis will not grow with temperature indefinitely. Photosynthesis will stop after you passes a threshold. Can we pass this threshold? That is the, the worry, number one. That the mass failing of mass production of food. So then we, we need to, 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 to be aware that we have a problem and we have to limit global, climate, uh, global warming. How do we do this? Several things. And then I will talk about modeling. We want to do this job. We want to have mathematical expressions that contemplate all these fluxes. Because the Earth system is a, a set of fluxes from the ocean to the atmosphere, ice and ocean, land and atmosphere, and the biosphere and the atmosphere. And we have you know, one big challenge among us uh, scientists is to overcome our paradigmas. An old paradigm is that forests were a consequence of climate. If you have good soil, if you have sunshine and water, you have forests. Period. However, it may not be so. And we did the following, uh, and this is how, how um, uh, before I will show you an experiment we did to take out the Amazon forest and see what happened. And this is essentially the ex our modeling uh, experiment, our model. The model, what is an Earth system model? An Earth system model is a a connection of atmosphere and ocean models. One model is the atmosphere model. And the other model, set of equations that we discretize and integrate in time in a supercomputer, is ocean model. And then we have the land model that de deals with the interaction between biosphere and the land and the atmosphere, and chemistry. Because chemistry in the atmosphere determines how much of the radiation that goes through that is trapped. As Anastasia showed, uh, not anticipated uh, results. If you have water convection that brings this water vapor and release it in the upper atmosphere, because of the atmosphere constitution, that will work as a radiator, enhance the radiator. So like an air conditioning here, that it takes the heat from here and put it out there, and we feel comfortable. The same happens in the atmosphere. So these components have to be mathematically expressed and integrated, and they have to be stable. And uh, the difficulty here is many, I will not uh, tell. But uh, how do we know whether or not we, our model represents the system? And uh, I will show how do we do this. We have uh, metrics to see if what we are doing makes sense. And I take here South America because this is what uh, I, I work uh, over there. I, I didn't have the, the time to bring it for Europe, uh, the map. The, uh, on top, in the left, is what we can simulate on rainfall, annual rainfall. When we just run our coupled model for 10 years, nonstop, and then we average, say, what is the rainfall you produce in the upper corner? And uh, here is observations for a period of 10 years. And so two versions of our model, version one, version two. In version two, we have several sophistications included. 
And, can, and here we have the difference between what we simulated, what we, our model produced, and observations. That is a very crude, no cosmetics on the, de on the quality of us representing rainfall. And you can see here that we had in, a, in the previous version very deficient rainfall over the Amazon, and it is not an exclusivity of our model. You can take any model, and they will show deficiency and reproduce Amazon rainfall. Our current model does a much better job, etc. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's just good, good work. Now, another thing we do to test if the, our model is or not doing something is that we impose a forcing. In this case, is CO2 concentrations according to IPCC <coughs> and historical and two uh, RCPs is a, a scenario for the future on, on carbon concentration and see how the model responds. So benchmark, so the model is responding as we understand. We can understand its response. So then let me show you an example of the use of a model to test a hypothesis. The question is, what happened when we do this? We take the blue there, or purple, is forest, current time, present time. And what if we put savanna there? And we go there in the model and erase the forest and change the parameters in the land surface so that it has albedo and uh, surface roughness, etc., cetera, of a, a pasture or, or savanna, uh, low scrubs, etc. And then we want now to run the model and see what the response will be. How do we do this? Uh, we, we, we perturb the way we deforest. We make a chess board one by one degree, five by five degrees, and, and the whole thing. And, do, and, and integrate, this is the coupled model. We have an initial condition and run it coupled for 10 years, 10, 30 years. First, with that uh, upper left corner representation globally. But I'm just picturing out South America. That's where we did the perturbation. And then we redo it with the deforested map. Simple, methodological way of then we compare the results. What the results are? So the difference between the experiment with vegetation, with the, the difference between, and the experiment without vegetation, if we take one from the other, the difference between them, here I show the difference. What we get in rainfall on top, Less rainfall, no, sorry, temperature on top. We had warmer region where we took the forest off. Does that make sense? Oh, yes, as we just learned. Four meters per square meter of uh, uh, area index, much less evaporation. Evaporation subtracts heat from the surface. We have more exposition, etc., etc. Oh, it makes sense. That is the amount of heating. But pay attention to the, the ocean. The ocean also warms near the coast of South America over the Pacific. And that is an indirect effect. It's a consequence. We didn't change the ocean. We just changed those things here. This is a con what we call controlled experiment. We change one thing and see how the whole responds. And see precipitation here. We have less precipitation, and precipitation as is, is a prognostic variable, that is the prediction. But we have more precipitation over, over the ocean. And the combination of warm ocean with more precipitation over the ocean is a not anticipated result of deforesting. And these two things here are called ENSO. This is also the discovery of our paper. It's the first time it was shown, 2009, that by the foresting, the, the climate, the, the Amazon forest, acted as a stabilizing phenomenon for an oceanic process. And that was the discovery. And everybody was very happy, but aware. And also, another thing I forgot to say, 
that the amount of rainfall reduction is double in relation if I do the same experiment, and we did, running the atmospheric model with prescribed SST, uh, temperature of the ocean. So if I don't let the ocean change, I take only in consideration the local changes, that will be half of the actual reduction in, in rainfall if I consider that the atmosphere is coupled to the ocean, not only to the, to the land. And so I said, wow, let us see. Let us put this in another context. So this is our experiment. We had forested, we deforested, and here I make a cross section of the circulation that connects to the biotic pump concept, even though the actual physics of the biotic pump is not included in our model. We use crude parameterizations, but still the process is so rob robust that by changing the cover, or the, we have a change in the circulation. This is again the difference. What we have, when we take the force off, we have less ascending motion. So appears here that an, an induced subsidence. And less rainfall. So it makes so a sense that we have and so here putting extra subsidence over the Amazon and reduction. Because this is a, a also a linear solution, we can also think of the opposite. We can think what happened if we had, pre the Amazon has nothing, it's savannah, and we reforest. That is the, our key point. What would happen? It's, it's, it's just the opposite of the previous section. We see when we have that as the basic state and we add for it in our crude model, uh, there is an, an enhanced upward motion and more rainfall. That give us hope, and, and that is a already set system. The ocean is just close to the, the forest, all the, the necessary things for this coupling to occur. So, uh, then I'm going to, to conclusion, coming back to the first slide. What are these external forces that can disrupt the climate system? so that we can have a novel system. And I didn't show you here what are the anticipations when we have one, two, three, four, five degrees warming. This is, would be another lecture, that I, but I can tell you that an, ex, uh, an extreme event, uh, in the event of a much warmer climate, we get more permafrost, the, fr uh, the soil, uh, the melting, liberating CH4, methane, and the hydrocarbons in the bottom of the ocean. And then we really have, uh, you know, uh, the Inferno by Dante. <laughs> that will be a story for kids to sleep. If you have seen Dante's Inferno, please look into it. But what are the external forces? We are. External force. There are several chain reactions, and I just showed you one that we cut the forest, the atmosphere interacts with the ocean, and reinforce the subsidence over the region, generate an en enhanced result. Uh, as I mentioned, releasing CO2, but what, what can we do? We, we cannot change much about this large scale ocean atmosphere changes. The ocean is going like a big ocean ship. It has an inertia. We have, have massive uh, for reforestation. This is something that we can actually collectively do, and, but in order to do this, it's not enough. We need to understand the concept of ecolo ecology, that we are part of an ecological system, and uh, that we come from this prospect in which human being, and see the male there, the, is, is the, the king, the crown of the system, to a system in which we all share responsibilities. And this is from Professor Otto Scharmer and Peter Tench from, from MIT. 
that we need to understand that we are part of a system. And this system grows as knowledge grows. And we need to do this. We need to work together to develop the knowledge. Until one day, knowledge becomes tools. And I can tell you, please don't use a tool that you don't manage, that you don't know how it works. Because you can get very, very uh, uh, damaged. But, and this is a, a nature paper relating papers in co-authorship. The brighter, the more co-authorship from different institutions. And you see how Europe relates to South, North America. South America also here. We, we live here. And uh, Asia, India. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> yeah, you see. <laughs> That's right. And this is our ability. I, parenthesis, please stop the, the clock. And uh, uh, a physical doctor that got into an uh, ocean uh, um, aquarium. And there were these uh, fish with lights that illuminates in, in the deep ocean. And he looked at that and thought, wow, it looks like a brain uh, image how the cells in the brain light lit up when we think. Close parenthesis back here. So I would like to come back to the first uh, slide and say uh, this line here, the curvature of this line, is not a fixed thing. It's a dynamical thing. And uh, I, I have to share with you that uh, our trip from Prague to here was very instructional for me because of a conversation I had with Dr. Makarieva and to say that we can change the line of climate stability with the stabilizing effects of forests. We can help planet Earth having a more stable climate if we understand what Professor Charmark showed us the importance of the roots, the root system, to connect it, the trees. It is a wonder of knowledge. So I praise the students here that uh, I, I learned to, uh, today, uh, uh, recently, that you used to say that we inherit the earth from our parents. It's not true. We borrow it from you. So we should keep care of the things that you lent us to take care while you were growing and learning. And so that, you see, this is the amount of species that are currently being extinct. And extinction is something very serious word in the tropical forests, from really small things to, to, to frogs. And if we do this, if we can face the challenge of working together, of having the enough patience to let science grow into actions, the frogs and the kids will say to us, thank you. <laughs>